How Quantum Entanglement May Be the Key to Long Distance Space Travel By Arjun Wally April. It is called Quantum Entanglement, it has extremely fascinating encounters what we believe to be the known scientific laws of the universe, so much so that Einstein himself could not wrap his head around it, he referred to it as spooky action at a distant dot. Recent research has taken quantum entanglement out of the theoretical realm of physics, and placed it into the realm of verified phenomena. For example, an experiment devised by the Griffith University S Center for Quantum Dynamics, led by Professor Howard Wiseman and his team of researchers at the University of Tokyo, recently published a paper in the journal Nature Communications confirming what Einstein did not believe to be real, the non-local collapse of a particle S wave function. And this is just one example of many. They did this by splitting a single photon between two laboratories, and testing whether measurement of it in one laboratory would actually cause a change in the local quantum state in the other laboratory. In doing so, researchers were able to verify the entanglement of the split single photon. Researchers have since replicated this experiment over and over again, with results of entanglement seen at kilometers of distance. Below is a great visual depiction of what quantum entanglement from the film, what the bleep do we know dot. Space is just the construct that gives the illusion that there are separate objects Dr. Quantum. Sure, there are a lot of philosophies regarding what all of this stuff actually means, but, as Dr. Elizabeth Rauscher puts it, it is a precursor to realizing that everything is connected, and that everything in the universe is one. What happens in what we call reality? is affecting something else in that same reality, it s all touching dot. What has happening here is that, either we are witnessing the transfer of information at a speed far greater than the speed of light, or even better, something completely instantaneous. If all points in space are connected, that means vast distances between places are simply an illusion. Furthermore, quantum entanglement challenges Einstein's theory of relativity but theories are developed to be tweaked and changed. Unfortunately, our world is plagued with secrecy, and you can learn more about that in an article about the black budget linked at the bottom of this article. The Lockheed Executive's Comments on Space Travel Rich was the second director of Lockheed Skunk Orchestra from 1975 to 1991. He has been called the father of stealth, having overseen the development of the stealth fighter, the F-117A Nighthawk. Before his death, Rich made several shocking open statements about the reality of UFOs and extraterrestrials. We already have the means to travel among the stars, but these technologies are locked up in black projects, and it would take an act of God to ever get them out to benefit humanity. Anything you can imagine, we already know how to do it. One. We now have technology to take ET home. No at 1T takes someone's lifetime to do it. There is an error in the equations. We know what it is. We now have the capability to travel to the stars. One. There are two types of UFOs the ones we build and the ones they build. One. When Rich was asked how UFO propulsion worked, he said, Let me ask you. How does ESP work? Question mark. The questioner responded with, All points in time and space are connected. Question mark. Rich then said, That is how it works! Exclamation mark. Quantum entanglement. Interesting to think about, isn't it? Perhaps the vast distances that exist between planets, solar systems, and more isn't he really as much of a barrier as we thought it was? What are the sources for these quotes? One of the sources is aerospace journalist. James Goodall, who wrote for publications such as JNS Defense Weekly, Aviation Week, and Space Technology, and Indoravia. He is an accomplished speaker specializing in the history, development, and operations of the world as only Mach 3 capable, manned air breathing aircraft, the SR 71 family of aircraft. He is also an author, as well as the associate curator at the Pacific Aviation Mess in Hawaii. He was also the restoration manager at the Museum of Flight and Pain Field, Everett, Washington. Goodall interviewed many from the classified black budget world, read more about that world here, he claimed that some of his contacts told him that we have things out there that are literally out of this world, better than Star Trek or what you see in the movies. One. 
From his work alone, James Goodall knew Ben Rich well. In a video interview, Goodall stated that he spoke to Rich approximately 10 days before he died. About 10 days before he died, I was speaking to Ben on the telephone at the USC Medical Center in LA. And he said, Jim, we have things out in the desert that are 50 years beyond what you can comprehend. They have about 4,500 people at the Lockheed Skunk Works. What have they been doing for the last 18 or 20 years? They rebuilding something. One. Another source comes from John Andrews, who was a legendary Lockheed engineer. He had written to Rich, stating his own belief in UFOs, both man made and extraterrestrial. Andrews has asked Rich if his own beliefs covered extraterrestrial as well as man made UFOs. Rich's reply was as follows. Yes, I am a believer in both categories. I feel everything is possible. Many of our man-made UFOs are unfunded opportunities. There are two types of UFOs, the ones we build, and the ones they build. One. In Rich's reply, he underlined the U, F, and O in unfunded opportunities. Thirdly, Jan Hartson, a senior executive with IBM, along with Tom Keller, an aerospace engineer who has worked as a computer systems analyst for NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, discusses a talk Ben gave some time ago. On March 23, 1993 at a UCLA School of Engineering talk where he was presenting a general history of sunk works, he said this. We now know how to travel to the stars. There is an error in the equations, and we have figured it out and now know how to travel to the stars and it one t take a lifetime to do it. It is time to end all the secrecy on this, as it no longer poses a national security threat, and make the technology available for use in the private sector. There are many in the intelligence community who would like to see this stay in the black and not see the light of day. We now have the technology to take ET home. One. Here is a video of Jan telling the story. Another one. Steve Justice, the recently retired director of advanced systems at Lockheed Skunk Works, signed on board with To The Stars Academy. To The Stars is an initiative to let the public know that unidentified flying objects are real, and they commonly perform maneuvers that defy our known laws of physics. It has goal, one out of many, is to bring forth these technologies that have been locked up in the black budget world in order to help humanity thrive. They will be working directly with the U.S. government to release video footage, documents, and more. Now, what does this all mean? What are the intentions? Who is providing these people with information, and who is providing the U.S. government with information? Those are completely different topics, but it would be sensible to exercise caution, as it is not uncommon for Western governments, corporations, and media to deceive us, to twist stories for their own personal gain. This is also a possibility with regards to the UFO phenomenon. So, what did Mr. Justice have to say? Well, a lot of things. One of the first statements he made using the To The Stars platform is that, when it comes to the technologies he has been around, worked with, and seen, it would be an understatement to call them revolutionary. He also stated, while discussing the concept for the craft that To The Stars plans to build, the following. This is a concept for an international point-to-point -point transportation craft that will erase the current travel limits of distance and time. It mimics the capabilities observed in unidentified aerial phenomenon by employing a driver system that alters space-time metric. We have glimpses of how the physics of this works, but we need to harvest technologies from the science division to realize the capability. By making this statement, he is telling the world that unidentified flying objects which are commonly tracked on military radar, utilize a device that somehow combats the problem of distance and time, making it easy for them to travel what we humans perceive as great and impossible distances in a short period of time. There is another way, whether it has wormholes, or warping space, there has got to be a way to generate energy so that you can pull it out of the vacuum, and the fact that they re, extraterrestrials, here shows us that they found a way. Jack Asher. Ph.D., Professor Emeritus of Physics, University of Nebraska. Another representative, Chris Mellon, CIA, commented, 
to the stars represents an opportunity to reach beyond the normal boundaries of aerospace to create products that we can call them revolutionary and that s too mild of a word dot. What has remarkable about the ET slash UFO phenomenon? It is quite remarkable how many verified statements we have regarding UFOs, unidentified flying objects, and extraterrestrials from people who have held the highest positions possible within the government, military, academia, politics and more. To be honest, it is overwhelming. And when you put all of those statements together with all of the previously classified documentation that has been released over the past few years, it paints a startling picture. Anybody who has done even a fair amount of research, and adheres to the philosophy of condemnation without investigation is the height of ignorance comma would not be able to deny this, and I have yet to come across someone who has done the research that still subjects this topic to the conspiracy theory realm. If you'd like to learn more about UFOs, a great place to start is by checking out what happens when they are tracked on military radar. To view a fraction of some verified quotes, and documents, and more, you can sift through the exopolitics section of our website and browse through our heavily sourced articles there. Below is an example, and a video I've used many times before, as it is an extremely powerful statement. I apologize if you've seen it before but it really hits home. There really is an abundant amount of evidence. Dot. Want to learn more about the secret space program? Below is a great lecture given by researcher Richard Dolan. A great place to start. I apologize if you've seen this content before, but we always have new readers visiting our site, so it is important to constantly put this information out there for those new eyes. Space is not empty, everything is connected. A century from now, it will be well known that, the vacuum of space which fills the universe is itself the real substratum of the universe, vacuum in a circulating state becomes matter, the electron is the fundamental particle of matter and is a vortex of vacuum with a vacuum less void at the center and it is dynamically stable, the speed of light relative to vacuum is the maximum speed that nature has provided and is an inherent property of the vacuum. Vacuum is a subtle fluid unknown in material media, vacuum is massless, continuous, non-viscous, and incompressible and is responsible for all the properties of matter, and that vacuum has always existed and will exist forever. Then scientists, engineers and philosophers will bend their heads in shame knowing that modern science ignored the vacuum in our chase to discover reality for more than a century. The quote above comes from Paramahamsa Juwari inventor of what has called the reactionless AC synchronous generator, RLG. What he says above has been the subject of discussion within the realms of physics and astronomy for decades. At the turn of the 19th century, physicists started to explore the relationship between energy and the structure of matter. In doing so, the belief that a physical, Newtonian material universe that was at the very heart of scientific knowing was dropped, and the realization that matter is nothing but an illusion replaced it. Scientists began to recognize that everything in the universe is made out of energy. Quantum physicists discovered that physical atoms are made up of vortices of energy that are constantly spinning and vibrating, each one radiating its own unique energy signature. This is also known as the vacuum or the zero-point field dot. What is even more fascinating is that the stuff within this space can be accessed and used. This was experimentally confirmed when the Casimir effect illustrated zero-point or vacuum state energy, which predicts that two metal plates close together attract each other due to an imbalance in the quantum fluctuations. You can see a visual demonstration of this concept here. Before Casimir, these pockets of nothing were thought to be voids? Unfortunately. When contemplating the nature of our reality and what we perceive to be our physical world, the existence of the vacuum and and what lies within what we call space is very much overlooked. I find it amusing how we re still searching for the God particle when a large amount of evidence points to the idea that most of what we refer to as reality is actually something we can t perceive with our physical senses. No point is more central than this that space is not empty, it is the seat of the most violent physics John Wheeler. It is quite confusing, which is why I am posting the video below of someone, out of many people, 
who spends their life researching and experimenting with these cool concepts. Below is a video of Nassim Hariman giving a TEDx talk at USCD. Nassim currently leads teams of physicists, electrical engineers, mathematicians and other scientists to explore the frontier of unification principles and their implications. Harman's lifelong vision of applied unified physics to create positive change in the world today is reflected in the mission of the Resonance Project Foundation. He shares the developments of his research through scientific publications and educational offerings through the Resonance Academy. Currently Nassim is focused on his most recent developments in quantum gravity and their applications to technology, new energy research, applied resonance, live sciences, permaculture, and consciousness studies. Nassim currently resides in Kauai compassionately raising his two young sons, and surfing the sunlit swells on the shores of the magnificent Hawaiian Islands. Here is an example of some of his published research, with co-authors one of whom is Elizabeth A. Rauscher, an American physicist. She is a former researcher with the Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory, Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, the Stanford Research Institute, and NASA. Space is actually not empty and it is full of energy. The energy in space is not trivial there is a lot of it and we can actually calculate how much energy there is in that space and that reality might actually come out of it. Everything we see is actually emerging from that space dot. If you like our channel, please subscribe and click the bell to be notified of our new videos. Feel free to share on your social media. Thanks for watching. See you next time.